Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the U.S. treatment of foreign operation income. This topic is covered in international accounting or taxation course covered on the CPA exam as well as the ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where I house all my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. And this is a list of all the courses that I cover. Also on my website, you have access to additional additional information and material such, such as the PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice exercises, and 2,000 plus CPA questions if you are preparing for your CPA. Please check it out. StudyPal.co is an artificial intelligence driven study buddy system that matches you with a CPA, CFA, or any other exam you are studying for. I suggest you check it out. They're available in 85 countries and 2,500 cities. So this session is pretty comprehensive. What do I mean it's pretty com comprehensive? Everything that you have learned up to this point about tax jurisdiction, foreign control corporation, tax haven, subchapter F income, and tax credit, we're going to be applying in a comprehensive example. So what I suggest you do, if you have any doubts about any of these terms, please look for the link in the description below i have the playlist you could look at them before we start to work this example because this is going to bring everything together okay so how do we de how do we determine whether an income is included the foreign income is included in u.s taxable income well there are few factors we have to take into account we have to take into account the legal fact the legal form of the foreign business is it a branch or is it a corporation or a subsidiary what i mean corporation is a subsidiary what about the who controls the uh, the corporation? Is it is it a controlled foreign corporation or it's not a con controlled foreign corporation? And that's why, if you don't know what controlled foreign corporation is, or if you don't know what tax jurisdiction is, you won't be able to know the difference between branch and corporation and CFC or not. Also, the effective tax rate, whether we are operating in a tax haven territory or not a tax haven territory, and the nature of the foreign source income whether it's a chapter f income or not and we need to learn about well we need to apply at that point the appropriate foreign tax credit basket which we also cover this so everything that that's in here all the factors i already explained so what i'm going to take all these factors and work work an example or summarize them into an example and see how this whole picture fits together so that's why you want to know everything before you start this session Okay, so let's go through the let's go through this uh, chart and see how it works. First, we ask ourselves, is this a branch? So, is the foreign operation a branch? Well, if the answer is yes, it's a branch. It's not a subsidiary. Easy. We're going to take the income from that branch and treat it as if it's in the U.S. So, the foreign income included in U.S. taxable income. That's easy. So, if we are operating not as a branch, not as a branch means as a subsidiary. Well, then we have to ask ourselves, is that subsidiary a controlled foreign corporation? Well, if the answer is no, well, if it's the answer is no, the U.S. don't own, the U.S. shareholders don't own more than 50%. And remember, we only count the U.S. shareholders that have 10% or more. Then we don't have to worry about this. Then it's not taxable in the U.S. So that's easy decision too. It's a current, it's not a, it's not a controlled foreign corporation. Therefore, it, it, it has nothing to do with the U.S. in a sense, therefore, the taxable income is not included. If it was a controlled foreign corporation, then we have to ask ourselves, what is the effective tax rate? Simply put, remember, the corporate tax rate we are using in the U.S. is 21%. Okay? And remember, there is, a, there is basically a safe harbor rule, which is 90% of this, 18.9. If the corporation, it's co controlled foreign corporation, but they're paying more than 18.9 which is more than 90 percent of the tax of the u.s tax rate then good for them then it doesn't matter foreign income is not taxable in the u.s because they're paying enough taxes so although it's a foreign control corporation but they're paying more than 18.9 which is 90 percent of 21 then that's fine if they are um, if the effective rate is less than 18.9 and it's a controlled foreign corporation, then we have to determine whether they have subchapter F income. So whether subchapter F income also specifically represent more than 5% of their total income. If it's not more than 5%, that's fine. We don't have to worry about them. So here we go. So we have to worry about them if they are co controlled foreign corporation, 
then they are this is a tax haven they are operating in a tax haven and the sub chapter f income is more than five percent because if it's less that's that's fine us doesn't worry about this now if the sub chapter f income is between five and seventy percent of the total income then we will tax them based on the proportionate income of the sub chapter f income so if they if they earn 30 percent of their income sub chapter f we 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 include 30 percent of the income in the us and by the way i went over this in another session if more than 70 percent of their income is considered sub chapter f income again if you don't know what sub chapter f income go to that go to that recording then everything is included everything is included then after we determine whether you know they are taxable or not we have to allocate each foreign entity us taxable income to the appropriate foreign tax credit basket and we talked about this in the prior session the foreign tax credit basket we have three baskets general income passive income and branch income then we have to determine the tax liability before before the tax credit uh, foreign tax credit and the net us tax liability after the foreign tax credit basket which we'll see this in a moment then we have to determine the us tax liability so those steps we're going to look we're going to see when we work the example next but this is what we have to do okay this is what we have to do and the best way to illustrate this concept i mean i would suggest you take notes from the slide or if you want to go to my your website and subscribe you can download it but this is this is what we're going to be using so to illustrate this concept we're going to assume a U.S. multinational that has operation in Costa Rica, Zimbabwe, Uzbekistan, and the Cayman Island. Okay, in four different places, and I'm going to show you the data for all for everything, and we're going to go through those steps step by step to determine how much of the income of from these corporations or subsidiaries or branches is included or not included. Let's first take a look at our Costa Rican uh, operation. It's a branch. Uh, the the uh, the uh, the U.S. multinational own 100%. It's manufacturing. Before tax in, uh, before tax income is 100,000. Income tax is 30%. After tax income is 70,000. This is 100 is the pre-tax income. Pre. Gross dividend they didn't pay any dividend. Withholding rate there's no withholding rate. Net dividend receive they didn't receive any dividend. Okay, so this is the Costa Rican. Now remember, the Costa Rican is look. If this is this is easy answer i'm just gonna what i'm gonna give you the costa rican is a branch sorry it's a branch because it's a branch the income is going to be included in the us period right because it's a branch okay that's easy that's an easy answer here we don't have to go any further remember the first thing is it a branch or a subsidiary it's a branch the zambe the zambebwayan corporation it's a corporation it's not a branch it's a subsidiary the multinational owns 50 percent and i'm sorry 80 percent which is it, it makes it a foreign um, a foreign controlled corporation they're in the mining business their pre-tax income is 100,000 their tax rate is 25 percent their after-tax income is only 75,000 after they pay the taxes they pay dividend to the multi to the u.s company of 20,000 the withholding rate is 10 percent net dividend received by the multinational is 18,000 because again there's a 10 percent withholding right 10 percent of 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 20,000 is 2,000 the dividend received by the US company is 18. The Uzbekistani is also a corporation uh, the multinational owns 100 percent they're in sales I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the Uzbekistani operation 15 percent of their sales is local and 85 to other countries okay uh, their income before tax is also 100,000. The income tax rate is 7.5. Income after tax is 92,000. Um, they paid everything to the uh, to the main company, to the to, to the U.S. company. The Uzbekistanis withheld 10 percent. Therefore, the net dividend received is 83.83,250. The Cayman Island, 100 percent owned by the U.S. It's investment. They own the activity is investment, which is a passive income. Pre-tax income is 100,000. They paid no taxes. Their after-tax income is one hundred thousand. They paid no dividend, and there is no dividend withholding rate. So those, this is the fact. Now, again, you want to take a picture of this. You want to, you, you know, whatever you want to do, because the next thing we're going to determine how much of the income of these 
subsidiaries or branches is included in the US. Actually, we already figured out the branch is easy. The branch is 100%. So the first thing we have to determine, kind of the first test, is it a branch or is it a subsidiary? Well, we already determined the Costa Rican operation is a branch. So that's done. That's an easy answer. So that, so what's going to happen is this $100,000, it's going to be included in the US, in the US taxable income. Okay, that's that's easy. The, the other three are subsidiaries. The other three are subsidiaries. Now, the next thing, once we determine they are subsidiaries, we have to check whether they are controlled foreign corporation. If they are controlled foreign corporation, the next thing we have to check is the subchapter F income. Well, all three are owned more than 50% by, by, the, by the multinational. It means all three are multi uh, are controlled foreign corporation. Okay, all three are controlled foreign corporation. The next thing we want to see if they are, if they are operating in a tax haven country. Why? Because if they are not operating in a tax haven country, well, guess what? They're paying enough taxes. We don't have to make them pay taxes in the U.S. Okay, are they operating in a tax haven country? Now we have to figure out the effective tax rate. Okay, as long as the effective tax rate where they're operating is less than ninety percent of the U.S. tax rate. U.S. tax rate right now is twenty-one percent. Therefore, as long as they are paying more than 18.9, we don't have to worry about them. So therefore, we stop, okay? Their income is not included. But if they're paying less than 18.9, we have to include their we have to include their income. So to compute the effective tax rate, we have to include the withholding rate with that. So let's take a look at let's take a look at them. Starting with the Cayman Island. The Cayman Island, the rate is zero. Guess what? Cayman Island is a tax haven. So that's easy. Why? Because the, the income tax rate, so basically you start here, the tax rate is, income tax rate is zero and there is no withholding tax rate. So that, that was an easy answer. Okay. So the the Cayman Island is a tax haven. Uzbekistan, the income tax is 7.5. Then you have to add the dividend, the withholding rate. The withholding rate is 10%, but remember you have to deduct uh, 0.25 from the withholding rate. Now, why do you have to deduct 0.25? Because after they pay you, after they send you the money, they have to withheld 0.25. Why 0.25? 10% times 0.75 because they already paid 75 on their taxes. Therefore, it's 7.5 plus 10% times 0.25, 0.25, which will give you in total, in total 16.75. 16.75 is less then the safe harbor rate 18.9 therefore the uzbekistan is also a tax haven okay so the uzbekistan is a tax haven the, the cayman island is a tax haven now we want to see the the uh, subchapter f income but we're gonna find out shortly okay the zimbabwean is their income tax their income tax rate is 25 percent we can stop right here it's not a tax haven but remember you have to add to it the withholding rate times one minus the withholding rate, which is 75%, which is one minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75, which is 0 0.75 of 10% is 0 0.75. So 25 plus 0 0.75, the effective tax rate is 32.5. Well, 32.5 is greater than 19%. Therefore, the Zimbabwean, we don't basically, we don't have to go any further because they're paying enough taxes. So what we're left with is the Uzbekistani operation and the Cayman Island. Now, since they are in a tax haven, they are controlled foreign corporation and they operate in tax haven. Now we have to look to see if they have a subchapter sub subchapter F income. Okay, I told you about the Zimb Zimbabwean operation. Um, it's not in tax haven, so we're done with that. The Cayman Island, they have a passive income. Passive income is is subchapter F income. Therefore, guess what? The Cayman Island income, that 100,000, will be included in the US with the US taxable income. The Uzbekistan, they import finished goods, then they sell in the region. And I told you 15% local, 85% to outsider. This is considered a foreign based company sales income. This is subchapter F income. And if you don't know what this is, please go to my subchapter controlled foreign corporations, subchapter F income, but they do, they do. Um, they do qualify for subchapter F income. So simply put, here's what's going to happen. We're going to include 100% of the Uzbekistani income. We're going to include 100% of the Cayman Island. And obviously the Costa Rican branch will be included. The Zimbabwean, they're paying enough taxes. We don't have to worry about that. So let's take a look at this. Again, this is the branch for the Costa Rican operation. 
the U.S. taxable income is 100000 If they were in the U.S., they would pay 21%, which is 21000 They actually paid to the Costa Rican government $30,000. Well, guess what? Since they paid $30,000, we, we can only give them a foreign tax credit of 21%. We're not going to give them tax credit for more than what they would have paid in the U.S. Therefore, the, the U.S. tax liability is zero because the foreign tax credit will eliminate this 21000 The U.S. Ta tax liability in zero, it's not only zero, now they carry, they carry an excess foreign tax credit for the future, or they can go back if they want to, of $9,000. Now let's take a look at the Uzbekistani operation, which is the general income. Notice we have to break them down into baskets. The branch is different than the subsidiary, and within the subsidiary we have a general income and we have passive income from the Cayman Islands. So this is the so the passive income is from the Cayman, and this is from the Uzbe, Uzbekistani. Okay. So again, we'll take one hundred thousand. In the U.S., they're supposed to pay twenty-one percent, which is twenty-one thousand. Well, they only pay to the foreign government sixteen thousand. 750 well the overall overall foreign tax credit is 21,000 they didn't even pay that much so we have to choose between 16,750 and 21,000 the lower the lower is 16,000 so they're supposed to pay 21 they only paid 16,750 it means they have to write a check to uncle sam for 4250 okay and they obviously they don't have excess foreign tax credit also the Costa Rican branch cannot help them because they're in a different basket. So they can, we cannot use the excess foreign tax credit from the Costa Rican branch to reduce the tax bill for the Uzbekistani operation. Okay, let's see the Cayman Island. The Cayman Island, the 100,000 is included. They have to pay 21,000. They paid zero and they have to pay 21. Uh, the, the, the max credit is 21. We have to choose between zero and 21. They only paid zero. So they paid nothing. Therefore, they are responsible for writing a check to you to Uncle Sam, twenty-one thousand dollars, because they have to pay taxes on that money. It is it is a f uh, controlled foreign corporation in a tax haven and subchapter F income. Okay, so what's their access foreign tax credit? Not nothing because they have to write a check. Once again, the Costa Rican branch cannot save them cannot save them because it's in a different basket so over overall what's going to happen is the the multinational corporation will pay in taxes 25250 they will have excess foreign tax credit for the costa rican branch of 9000 which can be used later on when the when the uh, when the rate in costa rica is lower than the us rate but just want to let you know prior to 2018 the zimbabwean dividend would have been included in the U.S. taxable income. Remember, the Zimbabwean sent dividend to the U.S. It would have been included under the new tax law, which is the participation exemption approach to tax and foreign income. That's not the case anymore. So the Zimbabwean, as we said, we don't have to worry about this. Even the dividend that they send us, we don't have to worry about that. In the next session, hopefully, hopefully I, I hope this example gave you an overview about all the rules because this is a good example. It just shows you everything from A to Z. In the next session, we would look at the U.S. Tax Reform 2017 and other international tax provision. If you have any questions, please email me. I strongly suggest you go to my website, visit my website, consider subscribing. It's an investment in your career. You have access to many resources that's going to help you understand and expand your knowledge about this topic. Good luck and study hard.